Okay, let's do an introduction to anatomy and answer the what questions. What is the anatomical position? What are the directional terms used in anatomy? And what are the anatomical planes and sections? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. Okay, let's get started and uh, start with a question. How would you describe the location of the yellow circle? You'd probably say, hey, that's on the front of the hand. Now, how would you describe the location of the yellow circle? Some may say, oh, it's on the inside of the hand. Another may say, nah, uh it's on the front of the hand, but it's facing in. Someone else can say, can we just say it's still on the front of the hand? Now, how would you describe the location of the yellow circle? Some would say, oh, it's on the outside of the hand. Or, no, that is on the back of the hand, but the person's facing to the right. Wait, who, who's right, my right or her right? And how would you describe the location of the yellow circle now? Someone would say, oh, it's on the front of the hand. N no, that's the back of the hand, but it's facing forward. Hold on. Are you saying she's facing away from us and the circle is facing towards us? Now, can you see the conundrum early anatomists face when trying to describe direction and position in the human body? The description of direction and position changed each time the position of the body changed. So what's the solution to this problem? Well, one standard position, and we call it, ta-da, the anatomical position. Now, the anatomical position consists of the following. Uh, the patient's facing forward. The arms are down at the side. The palms of the hand are facing forward with the thumbs pointing to the side. And it's always from the viewpoint of the patient or the cadaver or the image or the figure. So. This, the anatomical position becomes an initial point of reference to accurately describe location and direction. In other words, it doesn't matter if the patient's looking at you or away from you or to the side. The location of the yellow circle is always described with regards to this anatomical position. And so, for example, in these two pictures, we would say, oh, the yellow circle, it's on the front of the hand, regardless as if they're in the anatomical position or the hand is in a different position. Or in this case, we would say, oh, the yellow circle, it's on the back of the hand, regardless of the position of the patient. And so to reiterate, it doesn't matter if the patient's looking at you or away from you, the location of the yellow circle is always described with regards to this anatomical position. Okay, so now after anatomists got the anatomical position thing figured out, they tackled the next problem, which is, how can we be more specific in our directional and descriptive terms? So that's where we now come up with these anatomical terms of position. This list of uh, terms help to accurately describe where one anatomical structure is in relation to another. And these are the most common ones used in anatomy and in the healthcare system. All right, so let's do each of them individually. Let's start with anterior and in gross anatomy, Another term is ventral, which means towards the front. For example, anterior. The sternum is anterior to the vertebral column, or the sternum is ventral to the vertebral column. In contrast, there's posterior or dorsal, which means towards the back. For example, posterior. The vertebral column is posterior to the sternum, or the vertebral column is dorsal to the sternum. Now, this again, to reiterate, is always in relation to the anatomical position. Okay, so next, superior, uh, which means towards the top. For example, superior. The nose is superior to the mouth. And then there's, in contrast, inferior, which means towards the bottom. For example, inferior. The mouth is inferior to the nose. Next, cranial or cephalic means towards the top. So there's cranial. For example, the skull is cranial to the neck. Then there's caudal, which means towards the bottom, as in caudal, the neck is caudal to the skull. Some of you may be saying, but wait a second, didn't we just cover caudal? Isn't that the same thing as inferior? And cranial isn't the same thing as superior? These two terms, cranial or cephalic, cephalic meaning uh, head or towards the head and cranial towards the head and caudal towards the tail, are primarily used with regards to the skull and vertebral column or brain and spinal cord. You're going to see those terms used. Okay, so now medial, which means towards the midline. For example, medial. The nose is medial to the ears. And then there's lateral, as in towards the side. For example, lateral. The ears are lateral to the nose. 
And then there uh, is some practice ones. For example, oh, not practice one. We're getting to that in a second. Pardon me. Now let's take a little bit of a tangent and take a look at this orange and we take this orange apart. So when we look at some of these other directional terms, we may say, okay, how would you describe the location of the orange peel in relation to the pulp? Oh, we might say, oh, the orange peel is anterior to the pulp. No, wait, actually the peel is posterior to the pulp. No, no, wait, it's lateral to the pulp. No, wait, it's the, the orange peel is inferior to the pulp. So aren't they all correct? And that's why when describing structures that have depth and layers, the terms superficial and deep are used. So how would you describe the location of the orange peel in relation to the pulp? You'd say, oh, the peel is superficial to the pulp. And then how would you describe the location of the pulp in relation to the peel? We would say, oh, the pulp is deep to the peel. And it doesn't matter where we're talking about the pulp. It's always deep to the peel. All right, so let's take a look at these superficial and external terms with regards to anatomy. It's always means superficial or external means situated on the surface. So for example, superficial, the skin is superficial to the bone. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about this part of the skin or this part of the skin, it's always superficial to the bones. Now what about deep and internal, which means situated towards the inside? You'd say, okay, for example, deep. The bones are deep to the skin. So it doesn't mean if you're talking about this side of the bone or this bone or side of the bone, the bones are always deep to the skin. Okay. Now proximal, which means situated closer to the origin of the body. For example, proximal. The elbow is proximal to the wrist. And distal, which means situated farther from the origin of the body. For example, distal. The wrist is distal to the elbow. And this is uh, always taken from some type of an origin or point of origin. With regards to the limbs, it's the shoulder or hip. So, for example, the elbow is proximal and the wrist is distal. But we could go to a different part and say, oh, actually, the wrist is proximal compared to the palm of the hand, which is distal. Or take a look at a digit and say, well, this bone is proximal and this bone is distal. Always in relation to that origin or starting position. And so the anatomical terms of position are all listed here. These are ones that uh, you need to become familiar with and that you will become familiar and it'll become just part of your everyday jargon. Okay, so now let's do some practice. Let's complete the following descriptions using proper anatomical terms. And there may be more than one correct description. So the first one is this. The nose is blank and blank to the eyes. Pause. So I say pause so you can figure it out. Now the answer is, the nose is inferior and medial to the eyes. Next, the ears are blank and blank to the nose. So pause and think about it for a second. The answer is, the ears are lateral and posterior to the nose. And it doesn't matter which order you put those in. You see how more than one term can be used to better accurately describe where one structure is in relation to the other. And how about another? Hair is blank to the skull. Think about it. Hair is superficial to the skull or hair is external to the skull. Both are included because the hair covers all the different parts from the outside, towards the outside. And let's do one more. The biceps brachii muscle originates blank on the scapula and inserts blank on the radius. So pause. You could say the biceps brachii muscle originates proximally on the scapula and inserts distally on the radius. Or you could also say the biceps brachii originates superiorly on the scapula and inserts inserts inverts <laughs> and inserts inferiorly on the radius. Okay, so now that we've done that. Let's now talk about planes and sections, which is how can we better study the internal parts of the anatomy and the relationships so that everything inside the body. And so for planes and sections, the body is often sectioned or cut along a plane to study internal anatomy. Now, the body planes most fre frequently used are as follows, sagittal, coronal, and axial. And so a section bears the name of the plane along which it is cut. So think of a section like you actually cut something, but the plane is actually the imaginary line that you're going to then cut. Now, for example, cutting in the axial plane results in an axial section. All right, 
But for the sake of just our, our, our the way we're talking, planes and sections are synonymous. Just put them, even though I recognize that there is, there really is a difference between, because you're actually cutting as opposed to a plane, but radiology and imaging, we actually use these terms synonymously so often, planes and sections mean the same thing. Okay, so now, we're just going to start with the sagittal plane. And what is the sagittal plane? Well, it is a longitudinal line that divides structures into left and right parts. And so, for example, there we have the head and neck. We go shing, and we cut it, and then it's going to be from that view. And so, uh, the sagittal plane really helps to study anterior and posterior relationships and superior and inferior relationships with inside the human body. And so, there we have that view. Now, the sagittal line... Um, there's two different ways we describe sagittal lines. A mid-sagittal section, which is right down the middle, and it divides a structure into equal parts. Then there's a parasagittal section, which then divides a structure into unequal parts. And so we go shing, like this, and you'll recognize the mid-sagittal section, it's right down the middle of the head and neck, but the parasagittal is actually through an orbit. Now, with regards to the jargon, whenever you see a sagittal plane, usually is the assumption it's a mid-sagittal plane, and if it's, a, if it's going to be off the midline, we usually call it a parasagittal section. Okay, so now sagittal section or sagittal plane with regards to CT sections and CT imaging is in radiographic imaging. And what happens is, like a loaf of bread, they just start taking slices, and then every slice of bread within the loaf is what you look at individually. So they'll take the imaging through that plane, and then that plane, and 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 that plane, all the way through, and then you put a series and you look through them like like individual slices of bread within a loaf of bread. So for example, here is now going, the bottom right picture shows the orientation of what we're looking at with the vertical line you're gonna see moving, and then we just start moving through, and you see every plane, this is the sagittal section, and it allows us to see anterior posterior relationships and superior inferior relationships, and you see that moving line in the picture in the bottom right, it's showing you where in the body that plane or section is being taken from. So there is a sagittal plane. Next, let's talk about a coronal, also known as frontal plane. They're synonymous terms. And this is also a longitudinal line, which means it goes up and down, and it divides a structure into anterior and posterior parts. For example, like this. There's a line and shing, separating it, and that's the view in which we see it. So if we now uh, twist, we see this is what the plane or the, uh, the coronal planar section, what it looks like. And this is really good for studying relationships in left and, uh, right and left, and also superior and inferior views. Um, so there it is. There's the plane. You divide the structure into anterior and posterior parts, and when you look, you get a superior, inferior, right, and left direction. And so let's talk, take a look at what it'd be like in CT sections or images. And so we take a line, and then we just keep moving that line and taking a picture, taking a picture, taking a picture all the way through. And so now you're slicing a loaf of bread in a different plane or section. And so here we have it. And the bottom right picture shows a cross section because it helps you see where the uh, coronal plane is taken. So you're going to see that line that's horizontal line moving. And now we just see, see the horizontal line moving in the bottom right. And it's taking a picture and, and coronal planes moving front to back. And again, you see good right and left and superior and inferior relationships in this view. All right. And then finally, we have axial plane. And the axial plane is a horizontal line, goes side to side. And it's also known as an axial planar section, or horizontal, or transverse, or cross section. Sometimes use the letter X. All of those are synonymous. Yeah, it's a pain in the derriere, and I'm really sorry about that. I'm the messenger in this case. All right, so a horizontal line, and it divides a structure into superior and inferior parts. For example, like this, and shing, and we separate it. Now, here we have a little bit of a tangent I'm going to take, because what happens is we have these two different uh, sections. Now, the anatomy view, classically, is to view this section from head to foot, as if you're looking down like that. Now, and that's what the picture ends up looking like. In contrast, um, the radiology view is always viewed from foot to head, 
like this, and it looks like that. And so what happens then is we get this distinction. And I wish back in 1970, whenever it was, when CT images really, really started making it big, that anatomists and, and radiologists sat down and they had a cup of tea, just had a spot of tea and said, hey, you know, it would be silly if we did cross sections and we just looked at it from different views. Uh, you did it from head to foot and we looked at it from foot to head. Wouldn't that be silly? But the problem is it didn't happen. And so anatomists in cross sections view it from head to foot and radiologists from foot to head. And you think, how in the world could something like that happen? There's a few things in life that I think a spot of tea would have really helped if we would have had this discussion years before so that we'd be consistent in certain things. But anywho, I'm always going to take it from the radiology view because that's how you're going to be viewing, that's how health professionals will view axial sections for the rest of their career, which is either axial CT or axial MR. Okay, so there is the axial plane. Now, the top of an axial plane is always anterior and the bottom is always posterior. And if you forget that, just think, oh, the patient's lying on the table like this. Green feet, because I like the Incredible Hulk. But always remember it's from basically from you're looking as if the patient's lying on a table. Okay, now what about right and left? The right and left is located like this because you're viewing from foot to head. Now, what happens if you forget right and left? Well, the way I remember this is you take your right hand and then you say, I want to meet my patient. And then you shake the patient's right hand like this. Okay? You see that? So your right hand goes to the side with your patient's right hand. Have you ever shake a patient's, your right hand and you shake a patient's left hand? That's really awkward. That's one of those weird situations. So shake their hand, introduce yourself to them, and that's how you know which is the right and left. Okay, so there are the orientations. So when we do axial planar CT sections, what happens is they, they're, they're lying on their backs and they move through a machine and these images are taken at a horizontal plane at these different sections all the way down. And so you'll notice the picture in the bottom right shows where the cross section is taken and then you just start moving through. And you see the horizontal line in the bottom right showing what level or axial plane we're at. And this is really good for showing right and left relationships as well as anterior and posterior relationships. All right. Let's do just a little bit of practice, shall we? Identify the planes and sections demonstrated in the following radiographs. So when I show them, um, there's A, B, and C. Describe what the plane and sections for each of these are. And you can pause it because I'm going to go on to the answer in a second. All right, and the answers are A is showing an axial plane where it shows anterior and posterior and right and left uh, uh orientation of anatomy really nicely and then a sagittal is showing anterior and posterior and superior and inferior relationships and the coronal is showing left and right and superior inferior relationships how about another one identify the letter on this ct this that best describes or best indicates the posterior left region of this patient's trunk posterior left region so pause and find that all right well, posterior, because the patient's lying on their back, is here. And then you shake your left hand with their left hand, and there we have it. So the letter F best shows the posterior left region of this patient's trunk. Okay, like that. Shing! All right, so now this is Introduction to Anatomy in a Nutshell. Here we have the body in anatomical position with the patient facing forward, arms are to the side, hands facing anteriorly with the thumbs pointing laterally. And then directional terms are listed here that we describe any anatomical position in relation to another. And the best way to view the anatomy is through the following planes and sections, sagittal, coronal, and axial. And that, my friends, is an introduction to anatomy in a nutshell. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 